Hello and welcome to the very first Inventory Pro Tutorials. Um, assuming you have imported the asset, we can get started. So first off, let's create a new scene. And I'm going to save that inside of the Inventory Pro Tutorials. Uh, by default, I highly encourage you not to save anything inside the Inventory System folder, because uh, in case of an update, your files could be overwritten. So let's create a scene here. And first we have to create managers and the managers handle all the uh, files and items inside of the uh, inside of the scene so we can do that by going to add components and then inventory system managers inventory manager and automatically adds all of the other managers uh, then we have to add an item database that's where all the items will be stored and all the categories and so forth and we've got a language database where all the language specific stuff will be saved so first we go to create inventory system, an item database, and a language database. And then we have to assign that to our managers. And it doesn't really matter what it's named, just uh, like that. And then we just drag these in, and we've got that set up. Next we can go to tools, inventory system, main editors, which opens the uh, main editor window. And the first time you open you'll see um, an error. Um, and that's because we have to define where all of our items are going to be saved inside of the Unity Assets folder. Um, and so we select Set Path and choose a folder outside of the Inventory System folder. So I'll just use Inventory Pro Tutorials and I'll call it, um, I don't know, Items. And we select that folder. Uh, we can ignore the bit at the top for now. And we can choose a default slot icon which is, well, the default slot icon. Um, the item button prefab is actually the button or the prefab is going to be used to create the slots inside of the inventory. So if we select that, and by default there is one called item UI item prefab, which handles the button. Um, and we have to choose our GUI root, which we can do by creating one first. So we go to create UI and then canvas, which will create the canvas and the event system. So by default, our GUI root is always our canvas, so I'll just drag that in, and that's it. And nothing needs further attention right now, so that's all set up, and I'm just going to close that. And we're going to create an inventory window, that's the first thing we're going to do. Well, actually, we're going to create a character first, the player would be useful. So we're going to go create a floor for a bit. There we go. And we'll add our player. I've added the um, standard assets inside of the folder, so we can just grab a Ethan prefab. All right, got that set up. And now we've got the player. We need to add the inventory system player inventory player script. So this will tell which is our main player. All right, that done. And now we can actually create uh, the actual inventory window. So inside of our canvas, we can create a UI panel, which we got here. And switch to 2D, we can size our panel using the uh, Unity editor. And we can pin it to the right, for example. And by default, when you're um, window is being shown, it's positioned at 0, 0. Uh, this way you can design it outside of your viewport and then at start it will be reset to 0, 0. Um, but as you can see it's a bit of a problem now and we can fix that by changing the pivot. So if we change the pivot to 1, you'll see this little thingy move. And that way when we set it to 0, 0, that will be the center position. So if we change it to 1.1, we'll actually have a 10% offset on the right side. So that's how you can position your windows. And that way you can also create hundreds of windows and position them outside of your viewport. And then at game start, it will be positioned back to zero, zero. All right. So now we have to add our inventory system uh, windows. And as you can see, we've got a lot of windows, but for now we're just gonna start with the inventory window 
let's just close this. All right. So first, every window has the UI window component, and this handles the um, showing and hiding as well as key combinations. So if we like, we can add our own key combination here, such as I. So when we press I on the keyboard, the window will show, and once again, it will hide. And we can add animations for that here, but we'll do that in a bit. So just close that. And as you can see, we need to have a container. And the container is the location where all of the um, item buttons are going to be shown, or all the slots. So let's create our container first by UI, and let's make it a panel as well. I'm just gonna remove the image. And instead I'm going to add a grid layout group. And the grid layout group essentially just creates a grid inside of the, with UI elements. And we can define how large they're going to be. So let's just grab 4040, which is the build-in size for the default layout. And we can even set how many uh, columns we would like, but for now this will be fine. So let's add a bit of padding. Looks better. And inside of a panel, let's call this inventory window, we have to define our container. So this is our container. Let's give it a proper name. Okay. Um, the collection name, and it has to be unique, so uh, you as the user or developer are, um, are responsible for that, so make sure you give it a, a proper name, so let's just call this inventory. Um, references allows you to create something like a skill bar, where the object is dragged into it, but it isn't destroyed from the original position. So just think of a skill bar from games like World of Warcraft, etc. Um, the item button prefab allows you to override the default that we set in our settings. So inside of our settings, we set the item button prefab, which is the default global button that will be used for all collections, unless we override it. So you can leave it blank and it'll just take the default. Uh, already explained the container. Uh, manually defined collection allows you to um, select the slots inside of the collection um, if you leave it off, it'll generate those and handle everything for you. Um, sorting button, well, sorts the collection. Extender collection, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, and is loot to inventory. Um, when it's true or checked, uh, items that will be picked up or looted will be sent or considered to be placed inside of this inventory. So actually we can have multiple inventories. If I just duplicate this, we can have two inventories. And as you can see below here, we've got restrictions. So if I click restrictions and hit set, this window will pop up and we can restrict this inventory to a certain type or multiple types, whichever you like. So if we grab consumable, we'll now only be able to store consumable items in the left inventory window. And we could even add more. So let's say you want to equipable. So now only consumable and equipable items can be stored in the left inventory. We'll do that in a bit. Let's just first set up the first one properly. Um, scrolling rect allows you to well scroll inside of the inventory in case it grows larger uh, and you might want a scroll bar. Uh, loop priority, if you have multiple inventories, you can define a loop priority and the inventory with the highest loop priority will be chosen first. And the initial collection size is how many items will be generated um, when you start the game. So if you check manually defined collection, you can uh, choose how large it's going to be by yourself and the initial collection size will actually be ignored. Um, use item move to bank. When the bank's open and your inventory is open as well, if you right click or use the item, it will actually be moved to the bank instead of being used. And the same works with selling when you've got a vendor open. And here you've got a couple of audio clips that you can trigger the moment um, certain actions happen. And you can leave them blank, it's all fine. The restrictions, which I just explained, and then we've got a few more restrictions, so we can limit our inventory by weight, so items have certain weight, and when this weight is um, surpassed, no more, uh, no more items can be stored inside of the inventory, or inside of the collection. Just leave that off for now. Uh, can drop, so can we drop from the inventory? Well, yes, we can. Can we use from it? Yes, we can. We drag inside of it, yes, put items into it, and can stack items in collection as well. So we've got all that set up, which 
Um, should actually be enough to generate the items now, so let's just see what it does. And we've got our player, we don't have a camera, so if I had I, the window will show up and we've got all of these um, buttons or slots inside of our inventory window. Um, we can actually make it draggable as well. If you search for draggable window, um, a window will become draggable as well. So open up. There we go. And that's it for the very first tutorial. In the next tutorial we'll go into item creation and setting up the character window as well as looting items and so forth. So um, cheers and see you next time.